Welcome to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I'm your host, Joshua. Thank you so much for being here. I think this is episode six, and I'm just having the time of my life. Every episode has been fun. Every episode has been different. Extraordinary humans, just so blessed for all of my guests. And today, Jenny Ogden. I am geeked out by this because I am somebody that is very passionate not just about media literacy and the power of independent media, but part of that that a lot of people don't understand is all of the new technologies. Media literacy is not just being able to decipher between what's fake news and what's not. It's absolutely about being educated on the technologies that are available so that we can monetize our gifts, talents, and intellectual property. That's what's available for us all in the fourth industrial revolution. It is shocking how few people, how few of people realize that these opportunities are available. And so there is so much information. That's why I wrote the book, Media Company in a Box. It's all there. It's a guide. It's a workbook. It's interactive. There's so much material there. Research, studies, videos, trainings, everything. And you can find that on joshuatberglund.com as well as the whole World's Mayor Experience platform, all of the books, the movies, everything that I've been able to either create or co-create is all there on my website. You should check it out. Uh, But Jenny, wow. I mean, I'm telling you, for me, I'm going to geek out a little bit. And of course, I've got very set questions for her. But internally, I'm probably going to geek out and it'll probably come out a little bit uh, when we're talking to her and she's giving her answers. Let me tell you a little bit about our guest, Ginny. Ginny is a visionary founder. Love visionaries. Meeting a lot here recently. A lot of fellow visionaries. A lot of fellow people that have been forerunners, that have been out in front, blazing the trail for everyone else. I love meeting you all because, well, it's nice to know I'm not alone. Anyway, all right. Ginny Ogden, a visionary founder and creative producer and entrepreneur with a focus on new and emerging formats and technologies in entertainment. I bet she knows a lot of the same information I do, Um, which is gonna be exciting because I'm gonna learn a ton from her. She founded IQ, that's I-E-Y-E, Q Productions, specializing in project design, 3D mapping, and XR, full dome and AR VR formats. She later co-founded a disruptive technology company specializing in volume, volumetric capture and deployment at the forefront of virtual live performances. Spatial computing, VR and AI technologies developing a blockchain multiverse platform. I'm gonna geek out. Scenesy.io, that's S-C-E-N-E-Z dot I-O. Available on the Meta Marketplace and Apple Vision Pro. Gotta check this out. Wow. Ginny served as Vice President of the Producers Guild of America. Unbelievable. New Media Chair, completing over six years on the New Media Council Board, where she helped to champion the PGA PGA Innovation Award honoring immersive storytelling. Oh, wow. Okay, so as always, in the show notes after this is over, Uh, you'll be able to see all of her information, all of her websites, all that she's doing. Um, And we're going to be talking about another project she's doing, talking about immersive storytelling. This is going to be fun. Again, I may act like a 12-year-old, maybe even 8-year-old possibly at times because I'm going to geek out. I'm I'm a nerd about all these technologies because of all the opportunities that can create for other people. And the, the, the playing field's being leveled. Like we all have an equal opportunity right now at success. It may not look like that, but if you understand the technologies that are available to us, yes, some cost money, but you can get in the game for none. And so I hope that Ginny serves as an inspiration for you all. Hopefully you get a bunch of visions and downloads and you're just encouraged to go, you know what? I wanna do this, I wanna do this. Because if you're someone like me and has a really crazy, a really crazy past and You know, you're kind of limited on options as far as work and things like that. Media is that vehicle that you can take all that stuff that you used to tell yourself, I'm not worthy of a job, I can't get a job, I can't get employed, I got no value. When you learn media literacy and you learn these skills that Jenny's gonna dive in today, you're gonna realize 
you can monetize anything if you know media. So ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute honor and a privilege for me to introduce to you all, Jenny Ogden. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund, and we are featuring very special guest, someone I'm so excited to interview, Jenny Ogden. Jenny, welcome to 21 Questions. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited for this conversation. Oh, I am too. I think you're going to love the questions, and I'm excited to learn from you, but as I shared with you before we hit record, what you do is a big source of inspiration for me, so I... I'm just really excited to get into this. And But before we start, I'd love to ask you, what are you grateful for today and why? Uh, wow. I love I love that question, actually. Um, a friend of mine uh, and I trade gr gratitude lists every morning. So I, I, I love that. Um, right now, I am just grateful to have so much opportunity to make a difference. And... I love that we have the formats and the technology to meet people where they're at and really make true impact in the world uh, and through storytelling and technology and, and making sure that life is fun and joyful. So that's what I'm really thankful for. I love that answer because there's nothing more joyful than getting to do what we were created to do. And that and that's what this technology allows us to do. It's so exciting. All right, are you ready for 21 questions? I am. All right, let's get into it. Question one. Jenny, what sparked your passion for using immersive storytelling to tackle the climate crisis? Can you walk us through the journey that led to metamorphosis? Wow, okay, so uh, several things. Um, first of all, the. The thing about immersive storytelling is you're not watching something, you're experiencing it. And that sense of embodiment, whether you're doing VR or full dome or any any of these immersive formats, um, is, is it really impacts you on a deep, deeper level. And that's what we need. We need to really hit that social tipping point as well and move people. And how do you really move somebody? It's for them to experience it firsthand. Oh, such a good answer. Number two, how do you envision the one app to save the world revolutionizing, revolutionizing our daily interactions with environmental issues? Ah, it's such an amazing opportunity. And um, I've, I've established a development partnership with Niantic and they're the makers of Pokemon Go. Wow. And they're the perfect partners for me because they've created this network, this infrastructure where I can do very location specific education and actions on behalf of the environment. And I think that that's what's going to really move the needle is um, creating it in a, a gamified environment, but providing young people the tool to empower them to take action and that's really it's really addressing a lot of different issues not only the environment and climate but also the health and well-being of young people who are experiencing this insane amount of climate anxiety it's affecting their health their well-being right and it's also education but it's fun and if there's one thing that we know People is if you can tap into their passion and give them something that's compelling and interesting and fun and meaningful, then that's literally one app to save the world. Mm -hmm. And we also have an opportunity to amplify their voices because they need to be heard. You really do. That speaks to my heart. That speaks to my heart in a big way. Um, a big mission of mine is not just to be a voice for the voiceless and to elevate voices for the voiceless, but also to equip the voiceless so they have a voice. So you're speaking right to my heart. I love it. Number three, you've mentioned that immersive storytelling can rewire brain pathways. Mm -hmm. Could you share an example of how you've 
seen this play out in your work? Well, I, several ways. So first of all, um, we have plastic minds, basically. Uh, it's like a groove in a record player, right? <laughs> Constantly um, going over and over and over negative, um, negative aspects or negative intentions or depressing content, then you you really deepen that groove, right? But if you're in an immersive environment and you're embodied in an experience that is uplifting, that provides hope and joy and a sense of awe then you're you're creating new pathways you're creating that new groove and then the more and more you do that the more that you experience positive social behaviors in an immersive environment the more that's your norm right and and that can really change the world it really can a hundred percent a hundred percent such a great answer number four what's the most unexpected challenge you face in developing metamorphosis and how did you overcome it? I would say the biggest challenge I had is when I first um, wrote metamorphosis um, with a creative partner, a writing partner, Carrie Lundeen, who is a, a, an environmental filmmaker. Um, we were just aiming for the immersive experience, the immersive film. And it, it was in 2019, going into 2020, and we had this full dome film that was going to tour music festivals. And so you can imagine where that went, which was, for a moment, very depressing that everything kind of just got frozen. But it was really a blessing in disguise because it really allowed me to take a look at the impact. Mm -hmm. and, and how are we taking that inspiration and that amazing film and then taking it into the physical world to create real impact and i love social impact filmmaking whether it's a documentary or an immersive environment or it, all of the above but what's missing is that connection point where you actually what drives people to change their behaviors and go out into the physical world and make change and 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 fuel that passion. I'm I'm one of the people, I believe that if we don't feel the pain, we don't change. And with immersive storytelling, it allows us to feel things that we can't really feel or that we be, be, have been, actually back, probably back in the early days of TV, we could feel it better. And now we've become mm -hmm. sensitized to different stimulus that it really takes that immersive environment to feel it, feel it the way that we need to make an impact. And I think seeing some of the, especially with honesty and being authentic with some of the storytelling to uncover some of the injustices that happen in the world to people, but also our planet and also animals and other things like this can really help push the narrative forward in a way that I believe is productive because people actually feel the mm -hmm. pain in a way that they couldn't before. So I like that. I really align with that answer. Number five, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice about navigating the intersection of technology and social impact, what would it be? You know, it's a really good question. Just get out there and do it. <laughs> Even if it even if it's a small task a small thing that you can do in the world it can make a difference right it's it's uh it's like that analogy with butterfly wings right it's it's really about um getting out in the world and doing something and being a part of something and if everybody's doing their little part then it can make a big impact oh i agree it could be as simple as picking up trash off the ground Mm -hmm. or helping someone across the street or open the door for somebody anything like we see plastic oh, i'm gonna pick that up and throw it away or i'm gonna recycle because someone's probably watching and yeah. they're gonna see that and go oh, maybe i should pick up that bubble i mean maybe not bubble gum that's gross but you know what i mean 
<laughs> or help clean up the hey how about this let's help go help clean up the beaches and you know anything like any little thing you're right it's just one step is all it takes the next day take the next step mm -hmm. next day take the next one i love that all right number six can you paint a picture of what success looks like for metamorphosis what impact do you hope to see in five years oh wow well i think we have an opportunity here for exponential impact i really want to be able to move the needle and i think that tapping into passion of young people and not tapping in let me step back we're not going to save the world the young people will so how can we empower them how can we inspire them and then hand them the tools the education and and uh the motivation to go out into the world and save the world for themselves because that's really what we're doing um this idea that we're going to harness them and we're going to do something is really looking at it from the opposite direction of what i'm looking at what i'm doing is how do we empower young people yeah. how do we and and when i say young people I, this is really for everybody but I think the people that are really going to pick this up and run with it is Gen Z. Mm -hmm. And and these are the people whose world, you know, we're dictating right now and we're failing. So how do we lift them up and say, you know, here's a path, here's a tool, here's the correct information and and then as they run with it amplify their voices support them get beneath them not the other way around a hundred percent i believe that we are here people like yourself people like me and other forerunners and visionaries i know we're here to teach equip train and help rise up the next generation so they can build the world that we wanted to live in mm -hmm. like we've learned from the mistakes of our forefathers and our ancestors and everybody else and now like now it's time for us to go okay we've learned these lessons and now we're going to start teaching and that is what the power to me of what you're doing is is it's enabling teachers to become the new celebrity it's innate educators thought leaders people that are true activists in the sense that they're not just there to get attention but they're there to again educate and rise up to help people know truth and and know that there's a better way and know that there's opportunity we're here to be the ones to be that voice to mm -hmm. teach and so they can come make the world a better place i agree with you 100 percent on that absolutely beautiful number seven you've worked on projects ranging from feature films to ar apps what's been your favorite format to work with so far and why you know it's not the format per se it's the positive action. Oh yeah. Um, because the feature film that I produced was uh, advocating for foster and adoption. And it was about the message. And I was so passionate about that one. Um, I, I also did a, a was developing a, a live musical in a full dome environment. Cool. So, and, and that was cultural storytelling and and i just i loved that because there's just no room if you're doing something really impactful and celebratory and fun there's really not room for hatred or judgment or any of that there's just room for you know joy and awe and so actually i take i'm going to step that back i love full dome um, and I love that with the sphere and Cosm coming out mm -hmm. that um, people are are looking at that format now more for entertainment as well. And uh, it's such a powerful, powerful format because it's like VR in the immersion, mm -hmm. but it's a shared experience. So yeah. it's it's one of my favorites. And I've done a lot of theater and stuff too. And I just, I love that that shared experience. I think that that's that's cool. Absolutely. And one of the other comments that you made, it reminded me of something that I say is that when we're living in our purpose, 
we don't have time to be racist, homophobic douchebags. <laughs> because part of being in your purpose is, look, you know, your purpose is about other people. It's about how the value that you provide and how you can help them. And yeah, I get to use my gifts and talents, but it's about other people. Mm -hmm. But when you're living that way, I think you're in line with the creator and it's just like, you're, you're not, you're not going to be a jerk. You're, you're going to look out for other people. You're going to look to collaborate. You're going to seek to understand. You're not looking for enemies. You're looking for wins and you want to elevate other people. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just like all of your answers, just right to my heart. Love it. Number eight, if you had unlimited resources, what's the most ambitious project that you would love to bring to life? Metamorphosis. <laughs> That's a good I answer. Think, this is it. I don't have unlimited resources yet, but um, I, we're fundraising right now for this one. But um, I think it's so important. It's so impactful. It's multi-format. Um, you know, there's there's vision beyond you know the full dome tour and the app um, to go into a, a multiplayer VR experience and then series TV. So there's so many formats to explore for this. Sure. So many um, other stories to tell that are in alignment with it. And uh, this, this one's, this one's important. This I've is seen, a good one. And I love that answer too, because I've seen what I've seen of metamorphosis. I'm amazed. So I'm glad that that's the answer that you get. <laughs> that was a softball question for you, but I'm glad that's the <laughs> that's what I was aiming for, but good job. All right. <laughs> Number nine. How do you balance the need for technological innovation with ensuring your projects remain accessible to a wide audience? That's a good question. Um, because I love VR, but it's not accessible for everybody. And we all know that um, that there's communities um, that aren't communities of means that are actually feeling the impacts of climate change so much more. Yeah. And those are not the communities that have the VR headsets and the Apple Vision Pros in their households, but most of them have mobile phones. Yeah. And so if I can, and that's why um, I thought it was really important to make the app be on a mobile device so that everybody can participate because it's important for everybody to participate but especially those most impacted and uh and i don't expect those communities to have the latest technology so i wanted to meet people where they're at and lift them up okay first of all that's amazing and you're right because i think um course four i did on I, I taught a course here recently and it was the fourth course and the fourth one was about this very topic. 50% of homes in the world have laptops, like 80% have cell phones or it's some, it, yeah. the number is drastically different. So it's great to talk about VR and XR and all of these experiences, but you have people in Africa, they don't have the infrastructure yet to even be able to operate those things. Heck, we don't even have it all the way in America yet. So like we have work to do before we get there and say, hey, VR is accessible for all. So this is, you are showcasing yourself to be a true visionary. And I love that because not, it's not just a visionary of like, oh, this is how I can make money. It's how can I bring the world with me on this adventure? And you're making that accessible by bringing yes. it to phones. So inspiring, so inspiring. And, and let's be clear, the app's free. This is for the kids. This is for the future of the planet. This is for the health and well-being of young people and everybody. Um, it's it's not. There's not going to be a charge for that. That's amazing. That is so much. That is so fantastic. Number wait. Number two, number ten. Sorry, I lost track. Huh. Not good looking down. I need a teleprompter. There you go. <laughs> but these questions, I couldn't memorize these questions. There's no way. Okay. Um, can, can you share a moment when you realize the true power of immersive storytelling to change perspectives? Wow. You know, I'm, um, I'm involved in a group called XR women. Every Wednesday morning we meet in a platform and we have the most amazing speakers every week. And 
you know, teachers and scientists and people that actually study these things. So mm -hmm. there's actually studies that show, um, and I'm not the scientist, I'm, I'm the creative visionary, but <laughs> these things, um, they've really, the, the studies that show how impactful it is, young people uh, in education retain information at up to a 90 percent better rate in immersive and interactive formats wow and it's because of that embodiment they're not just watching it and memorizing something for a test they're experiencing it um and you know the, the studies that show you know the effects of immersive formats on depression mindfulness um moving the needle in so many different ways uh, i for one would never do a first person shooter game mm -hmm. not interested i know they make a lot of money but um is is that what we want to see in our world and, and i think that as storytellers and creators that should be our first question you know what what do we want to create in the world because we're really impacting people and the more and more studies that come out showing this um, the more and more responsibility I think that we have. I I used to grow up shooting guns and stuff like that with my dad, and we'd go shoot snakes and as a kid. And but I got to tell you, like I like I'm becoming less. I don't I don't carry a gun. I don't want to carry a gun. I I mean I may need private security at some point in my life, but I have no desire for that because mm -hmm. I don't want to live in a world of violence. And that may be naive. But my goal really is for peace, and mm -hmm. and I and I want to see people live in harmony with each other, regardless of differences. In fact, I want to see people celebrate each other's differences, and I believe these technologies that we're involved with can do that. Yes. So yeah, I don't need a first-person shooter for that. I would rather ride a roller coaster. <laughs> if I, I can ride a have a roller coaster experience, that would be better than shooting something. But that's mm -hmm. my own opinion. Anyway. Yeah, all right. uh, and mine as well. I mean, there's a lot of people in gaming, and I love them all, and they're all amazing people, and they're all visionary. But sure. that's that's kind of my take on it. I I, I look at the stories we tell, and um, and how that impacts the world we live in. A hundred percent. They call it television for a reason. Anyway, number eleven. In your experience, what's the secret ingredient that turns a good story? into a transformative transform transformative experience i'm going to go right back to that sense of awe i want to even when i did live theater and we were doing immersive um, projection design in traditional theaters when you got to sit in the back of the theater and watch people respond to what you've designed that sense of awe, that first like gasp and look around is like, it's it's better than the paycheck. So fulfilling. That's that's such a romantic answer. I love it. It's so good. Ah, number twelve. How do you see blockchain technology shaping the future of social impact initiatives? Ah, that's a good one. So I. I love blockchain technology for the the ledger technology. Um, I think that there's a lot of there's two different kinds of blockchain. There's there's some that are really um, a big drain on energy and resources. Um, but then now that there's these proof of stake um, platforms, I think that using those to be able to track impact which we'll be doing with one app to save the world mm -hmm. and gamification and and rewards um i think that blockchain technology is is very valid it's not all about nfts and cryptocurrency it's really about that um ability to to track and and uh reward and know exactly what's it's 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 a really powerful technology and it's a really powerful it, i always look at it as a, a next level spreadsheet that keeps track of everything and 
automates everything. So um, I, I really like blockchain a lot. I'm a big fan of it too, the more I learn about it. But the least attractive thing about it to me is NFTs. I, yeah. That's the part I still am not wrapped. I can't embrace that. And I was avoidant of getting into it for a long time because they're like, that's not attractive to me. I'd rather go work with the real artist. But now things are evolving and it's really, we're, we're seeing more of what's possible and that is exciting. But the mm -hmm. NFT part is the least attractive of all the blockchain things so far to me. Anyway, yeah. number uh, 13. Oh, I like this one. Okay. If you could collaborate with any historical figure on a project, what would it be and what would you create? A historical figure. Oh my gosh, there's so many amazing historical figures. I mean, there's the low hanging fruit. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. is an amazing historical figure. Gandhi would be amazing um really getting that actually getting an opportunity to interview people like that um about their views and their philosophies would be amazing mm -hmm. that's the i guess I'll, I'll go i i'll live with that so there's so many there's so many people in history that are just so amazing that we're all about um peace and making the world a better place what would you create though an interview show or something else it would be it would be an interview show and it would be um and it would be in a one of the new technologies formats um volumetric capture so i can see their i want to see their eyes i want to see their facial expressions micro expressions could you imagine they haven't even seen they haven't even seen color TV, and then all of a sudden <laughs> they're experiencing. They may lose their mind. Wow, that'd be awesome, though. I like I like to think about that. Yeah, I well, I, I just kind of gave away one of the IPs that I've 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 got in the back of my mind. So, oh, well, <laughs> I didn't hear it. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. All right, number fourteen. What's the most surprising skill? that you've had to develop in your career that you never anticipated needing? The most surprising skill I've had to develop. Honestly, I think that the most important skill I've developed or I've found is relationships. Wow. It's, it's all around relationships. If I can pick up the phone and talk to the people I've worked with in my past and they take my call, it's a win. And then, and then, you know, being able to, um, inspire. I love that. It's so good. <laughs> Number 15. This is a question for all the creatives out there. How do you recharge your creative batteries when working on such emotionally charged subjects? Well, for me, it's unplugging. You need to make sure you unplug every day. Um, take a walk on the beach, get out in nature, put your toes in the sand. For me, I live near the coast, so um, mm -hmm. meditate. That's, you know, that's the thing too, is yes, there's absolutely a, a, a potential of getting in an immersive world and never wanting to leave like the movie mm -hmm. lawnmower man <laughs> right there's absolutely that is possible but so is this yeah all day long this is all possible and so we, do we, that have, all day long. we have these tools but the whole point of them is to use them in a way that allows us to go do things in real life not stay in it it's a great tool it's amazing it can do so many productive things but then we get to put the headsets down and go in our communities and have fun and enjoy each other. Yeah. I, I love, I love that you just preach balance. That's a beautiful thing. All right. Ooh, number 16. 
Can you tell us about a time when a project didn't go as planned and what it taught you about resilience in this industry? Hmm. I'm going to be vague about it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but um, sometimes you get into relate business relationships, partnerships, and they don't work out. And you realize that your values just weren't in alignment, even though maybe you thought that they were. And the most painful thing that you have to do sometimes is step away from something that you were really passionate about. And uh, so I have experienced that and, and then come full circle into doing a really positive project and remembering who you are and how amazing it is and how much you love your work. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's the most difficult thing you can do is to make a decision to step away from something that you were creating. I that totally aligns with me in personal life and business life and all kinds of my parts of my life is sometimes it's just, you got to walk away. It sucks, but you got to do it. And I'm one of those people that if I'm passionate about it, I have a hard time giving up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a pride thing, an ego thing, or just this belief, but it's the same belief that has made me go on the path that I have that I have zero regrets about, even though sometimes I look around me going, Okay, is this going to pay off? <laughs> like, I know I'm doing the right thing, but uh, this is getting a little scary. So anyway, wonderful. Number 17. If metamorphosis could instantly solve one aspect of the climate crisis, what would you choose and why? Wow. One aspect of the climate crisis. That's really difficult. That is really difficult. I mean, uh, you know, obviously we need to draw down. We need to we need to cool this world. And there's so many different strategies to do that. Um, but I think it's the health and well-being of people. Um, mm -hmm. Getting everybody in alignment, um, but not panicking. I think doom and gloom storytelling creates apathy. Mm. And I think we need to inspire people and calm those nerves down and say, it's not hopeless. Yeah. You're not helpless. Let's all go out. Let's work together and make this happen. I, I think that there's just so much anxiety in the world and so much I don't know, almost trauma in the world right now that we need to we need to look at that health and well-being aspect and make sure that people can take a deep breath and not feel like everybody's going to die tomorrow. Yeah. Right? And and go out and say, "Okay, what are some solutions and and how can we each do our little part?" 100% a hundred percent agree with you. It is, you could look at the changes that are coming with AI and everything else with fear and, oh, but really there's opportunity. Like, yes. in fact, most of the jobs are going to be gone or jobs that people didn't want to begin with. They just yep. did it because it's what paid the bills. But then how freaking miserable were you? Like, because <laughs> you weren't doing what you loved and we were created to create and do what we love. We were created to use our gifts and our talents. That's what we're here for, not to bury them. And that's what's happened with a lot of these jobs. We have an opportunity now, but it takes a common sense approach. And I love people like yourself that is advanced with technology as you are. You have a common sense approach to all of it that I believe can help people meet in the middle. So I applaud leaders like yourself because people do need this education so that they mm. don't, instead of running from it, embrace it. Embrace the changes. They're good. They're good changes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I get fired up about it. So sorry. Well, and that's what immersive allows you to do. Yeah. Visualize, embody a better world. And then go do it. 
-hmm. because now you can see it go do it own it live in it that's right that's right all right number 18. oh all right how do you envision the role of ai in shaping the future of immersive storytelling and environmental activism Well, I know that even with metamorphosis, we will be tapping into AI for certain things. Um, it allows you to reach more people because we can um, we can really tap into AI for localization, mm. right? So we can make sure that everybody, no matter what language they speak, can get this information. Right. And AI can provide that localization um so much more quickly so much more easily than a small team like what we have for metamorphosis will be able to do and so if i can record my hero uh, mm -hmm. mariah her name is mariah um and she speaks english the 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 young lady that i have cast um potentially cast for this um she speaks english if i can capture her in english and then make sure that people that speak you know every language spanish swahili whatever uh mandarin can understand and get the learning get the messaging mm -hmm. get all of that then then we can move the needle and so i think that there's a lot of powerful use case um for ai um and Honestly, I don't hate generative AI either. I think that it can really get your um, creative vision out of your head yeah. in a way that then your artists can really run with it. And uh, that, my, my team used to tease me because I would try and articulate an idea and uh, I'm not the artist, stick figures. They'd get a stick figure <laughs> and they'd always put it on the wall because they thought they were so funny, but it got the, got the idea across, right? So. I love that. You know, AI, AI has been a, uh, I have a love hate relationship with it because I, I hate it when I see people let it be their brain. Mm -hmm. But you can tell the people that understand how to use it the right way and in a way that's productive where they're actually still learning from it, but they're using it as a tool at, in re, maybe in replacing of a coworker or they don't have the money to pay employees to help them. I know for me, being a one person media organization for the last several years, when I didn't have AI, my process took hours upon hours upon hours. And now it's like a 30 minute thing and, and mm -hmm. it's feasible and doable and it's a huge blessing. But at the same time, the one thing I never want to happen is it to start becoming my thoughts. Like right. I never want to lose my creative process. And I believe that it can steal that from us if we allow it to. So mm -hmm. it's a tool. It's not God. <laughs> it's a tool for the tool belt. But to me, that's there's nothing more. It's great. It can't be great, but it's just a tool. Anyway, I love your answer. All right. Number 19. What's the most exciting emerging technology that you're currently exploring for future projects? Hmm. The most exciting immersive technology. Or emerging, emerging technology. Emerging technology. Well, again, volumetric capture is, um, is, is something that I'm super excited about. I've worked in it in the past and plan on working more in it in the future. Um, and honestly, the, the technology is advancing so much that pretty soon you won't need the big expensive stage and you'll be able to do, you know, using LiDAR cameras and that sort of thing. But I just think that that's so compelling to be able to um, meet somebody in any format um, as themselves in 3D is, uh, it's just powerful and and it's such a cool format and you can do so much with it you can you know you can get one capture that's just the the perfect take and not have to do the reverse shots pickup shots all of that you've got it you've got it from every angle so this question's not added so we're going to do a bonus 22 questions even though i know i've asked more than that but i'm going to add this question because i didn't put this in here but i feel led to ask that kind of technology if i had a young like a young daughter 
that I didn't want to send out to LA and go through the, you know, the ranks of Hollywood and try to work her way up and all that stuff. Isn't this a safer way for kids to learn how to perform on stage and maybe even get acting classes or learn to perform in front of audiences? Can't, couldn't something be built for kids that was really a safer environment than, you know, again, going through some of the Hollywood stuff that happens? Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, training, teaching is, is a great, uh, it's a great format for that. And as we continue to emerge into more spatial computing mm -hmm. and that becomes um, more accessible, then, you know, you can have your teacher in your living room, right? And using glasses. So, yeah. um, and that's where we're heading, right? And so, you know, whether you're doing entertainment or training or teaching, it's, it's, it's an amazing format. What a time to be alive. <laughs> Number 20. If you could instantly give everyone in the world one skill or piece of knowledge related to climate action, what would it be? One skill or piece of knowledge. I, you know, I would say, um, it's about having open discussions mm. and going out and making a difference. If everybody's doing, because we all know that it's the big corporate polluters that need to really get on board to shift the needle. But for instance, for with one app to save the world, um, back to my studies, studies show that, that especially young girls, and my hero is a young girl, um, have the most power in changing the minds of their parents and the adults in their lives, right? And, and it's just that, again, that passion. But... Um, in the story of metamorphosis, Mariah's father is a climate denier. Mm. She has the ability to educate him and change his mind. And so what if some of our users' parents were CEOs of these big corporations? And what if some of the tasks that are given through the gamification are to interview their parents? <laughs> And, and what if that actually can move the needle in a much bigger way, right? We'll be connecting them with the local NGOs, you know, grassroots organizations and that sort of thing and getting them involved in, you know, positive climate action and that sort of thing. But it's about the education mm -hmm. and amplifying their voices and giving them tasks that get them to start talking to their parents about these things that is really an opportunity here that we don't want to miss. There's, there's something to that because when my little girls talk to me and they share something, when they share their heart, it's really hard for me not to listen. I, I may see the world through one lens, but they've really helped me see it through a completely different. And mm -hmm. so I, I like what you said there because I think you, there, there's something to what you said that's very, very true and profound. I'm really curious what the audience thinks, but to me, that that's true. All right, last question. Wow, this has been terrific. And I just, my phone just went off. Here we go. Number 21, for those inspired by your work, and I know I am, what's the first step you would recommend to start making a difference? Wow. Well, if you're a storyteller, choose choose the stories you choose to tell. Um, with with that in mind, what are you putting into the world? Mm. How do you want to change the world? What kind of world do you want to live in? And tell those stories. Visualize them. Embody them. Um, because when you capture somebody's hearts and minds. You, you really are moving the needle in a positive direction. So as a storyteller, a creator, um, you know, think about the stories you're telling. So good. Jenny, absolutely amazing. I, I loved all of your answers. They were so great. Um, I would love to give you the opportunity to have the last words. Please plug where people can find you, support you, people that are looking to 
to invest in an amazing project that's going to change the world. Uh, please, social media, all the stuff, the, the floor is yours. Last word. Ah, thank you. Well, um, I would say, and I think that you might post it along with this, um, on, on the IQ Actions website, I have a page for Metamorphosis. And there's a donate button there. We have partnered with an amazing fiscal sponsor. So we can take grant funding. We can take philanthropic funding. And we can also take individual donations. So if your company has matching funds for um, philanthropy, um, I would love for people to tap into that. And there's a donate button right there. And we do have a 501c3 creative visions. They're amazing. And everything that if somebody does want to donate, um, it's tax deductible. So there you go. That's that can that can start really jump starting this project. Okay, twenty three questions. Um, <laughs> do you also look for strategic partners that are in the renewable space as far as that are bringing solutions to the table? Absolutely. Um, and they're going to be really important partners because the technologies that are bringing solutions to the table, those are all educational fodder for the app. And there's going to be constant content created for the app and constant opportunities to tap into young people's minds for that. So I think that that's super important. Um, and I also think that all of the people that are um, creating environmental films, that are creating new technologies, that are really moving the needle, for kids to be educated by that. Um, another big thing that we're looking at in our storytelling and also through the app is um, future careers. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I would like through the app to be, um, once we've grown to a certain place, um, to be rewarding kids with scholarship opportunities to explore their future careers um, in green technology, in policy making. So um, I'll be looking for partners for all of those things. Right now, I've got a partner that will allow me to um, tour the dome through through festivals and that sort of thing sustainably and provide green power for it. So we're really trying to walk our talk. I'm inspired. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I I actually have two introductions for you that I'm going to make. Um, and, and yeah, I believe that these are really, really great collaborations for you. And of course, anything that I can do to help support what you're doing, I'm I'm all in. I I, I love it. I've, I'm so inspired by you. So happy that you agreed to do this. And I look forward to seeing you again. Oh, well, thank you. And this was fun. I have to say, you know, I did, had no idea what questions you were going to ask. So it was fun. Oh, you handled them great. I, sometimes people, sometimes people ask for the questions ahead of time, and it, you know, it's not as fun. But at the same time, they're challenging, so I get it. But <laughs> you were you handled them like a pro, and I mean, you just shared your authentic truth, and it was beautiful. So I was honored, blessed. I learned a lot, and I'm really, really excited to see all that takes place for you. Oh, thank you. Talk soon. Okay, thank you very much for including me.